Hey all, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Okay, so in this video, could be important for some people, um, is the algorithms that I've got, little basic ones, this one's so dead easy. I mean, it's just basically a Euro dollar conversion of the current price and uh, the 125,000 uh, dollars for Euro contract and bring it back in US dollars. So. What we're doing here is we've got this out little, I don't even call it an algorithm, just a calculation done in Python where we have a price uh, argument and then we have this unit uh, in the contract of euro 125,000. So in my code like here, um, what I've done is I've created a new project here called Futures Algorithm. This is the very first one that I'm working with. So I'm going to try to give people a better overview of how this will work in C++. Now, first we need to talk about the ability to build out classes using object-oriented programming, which obviously both Python and C++ are built upon. And from there, uh, I'm gonna show you uh, the different headers and uh, how I'm planning to do it with um, the the, um, I'll call it a library that will be eventually become a library, but I'm just keeping it really basic for now, uh, which will be just another class, C++ class, uh, that I call from my main function. Okay, so let me just walk you through this. First, um, we've got different headers, dot .h, dot .h um, here. Um, so in this case, I've got a special header file uh, called futures constants. Now I did this for my C days. These are just constants that instead of just giving it some number in the code, you give it a definition like I've defined here. So in this case this is the unit of the contract, 125,000. So over here in the futures header, uh, this is a typical structure that you use to define your class. So we have here this if def uh, futures header and futures defining of it. These aren't really used, but this is created on default when you add new um, classes within code Lake, the IDE. So here we have define our class futures. We've uh, enabled the public access to both futures, which is this is the con constructor. This is the D structure. So what these mean basically is the futures constructor basically calls itself when it starts up. No different than C sharp, Java works the same way. When you instantiate this class, what will happen is your constructor gets called first. So any code found in this, in this uh, constructor will get executed. And the same in the destructor. So when you um, basically destroy the object when you instantiate your futures class, which I'll show you an example of the code, um, you will have the destructor get called. So any code in the destructor will be called. Okay, so here we've added two new functions uh, into the class, again with public access. So if you want private, you just put in private colon and anything uh, below that will be defined as not not accessible uh, directly from the code. Um, that makes sense. And so we have here two functions publicly um, available when you instantiate the class. And I'll show you what I mean instantiating the class. So we'll walk you through this code again. But here we have the test and we have the Euro future. So this Euro future is just a typical little dinky calculation function that I'll use. And here it takes an argument no different than Python, Java, C Sharp, all those languages. It takes a parameter or an argument of a data type of double. And you'll notice both of these are double um, data types. So basically there's in, there's float and double. And doubles, kind of what you I've seen in a lot of the high speed um, libraries like Quantlib use double. So you can still get decimal data types um, using double. Still might not be the most efficient, but for what I'm doing, where efficiency is not the name of the game right now, it's still kind of you want fast, but you want convenience in the code. If you want 
speed. Um, this is not the kind of programming you'd be doing anyways. It'd be totally different. But you can still do that kind of programming in C and C++. But right now, we're just keeping it simple and object-oriented. Okay, so we've got that defined in our header features. So let's move over to the features class, the source file of the, sort, uh, of the C++. Now, I mentioned here earlier that we have two things called constructor and a destructor. So here, I can put code in here when that this constructor gets called and when I uh, basically destroy the object when instantiated, all the code here gets called as well. All right, so here um, we've got a little test function called test and we're returning a data type of 1.0324, fine. We have a double type here that it's returning and we need to make sure it matches um, the, the return type matches the, the declared data type that you're defining for the object. Same thing here, you gotta make sure that it matches that it's, it's it, the, if you call double and you define it, it's gonna call double as a return type. Makes sense, cool. All right, so we're doing the same thing here in another function um, called uh, Euro future. So as I said, what we're doing here is we're passing a double argument called P, and really P is just a price for simplistic sakes. And this is gonna be assumed to be in euros. And all we're doing is um, basically returning the price of the argument P and multiplying it by the um, contract uh, size that we used to find here in the constants. And that's pretty well it. And then again, same thing. We've got a double type returning. And of course, we're returning a double type of um, P, which is defined as double. Now here, this might be useful to put this as a dot, dot zero as well, because this is another way of making sure in C++ that instead of this being just a plain old integer, you want this to actually be a double. Um, for my testing, for now, that might not be needed, but you need to do that definitely in, in um, Python, and you might as well just follow suit in C++ for now, until somebody tells me, well, I'm wasting my time doing that. That's cool. Okay, so these are, this is how we define our class, this is how we define our header file, and then we have a special constants header file as well. Now here's where it gets interesting. This is our client code right here. So what we're doing here is, this is standard um, C++ where we defining our namespace as standard, STD, and that is defined here by these two header files uh, that are standard M, C++, so we have a standard input output and a standard uh, IO stream. So what we're doing here is we've defined our namespace uh, probably do a Google on that for C++ if you're not concerned, not too um, aware of that. And here within the main, we've got two types of arguments in, in all main uh, C++ functions. So this is where everything gets called first and, and gets initiated when you run your program in main. And then in the main function, we have uh, the number of arguments we're passing it if we're gonna run this on the command line and the arguments as well as a double point. I'm not gonna get into that because it gets kind of confusing, but this is classic um, C code, okay? So there's being intermingled here between C and C++. So what we've got here is we've got our futures um, header file defined here, as you can see. And what we're doing is we're defining or including it in our main uh, C++ so our main function can get access to it. So all we're really doing, just for simplistic sakes, we, this is what we call instantiating. So we're creating this function, or sorry, this class um, in memory called F, and it's defined and structured as defined here in, in the futures header file. So this is what F will look like, all these data objects, right? So knowing that, um, all we're really doing is creating our futures F and what we're going to do is we have a double return type and then our F is going to call the function euro future right here. 
zero future. So it's going to call this guy, and we're passing it this one dot one dot six. Okay, and that guess what? It's going to return this calculation. It's going to take the p, multiply that constant of euro contract size. This guy right here is going to basically multiply whatever the price is being passed as, and multiplying one hundred twenty-five thousand. Cool, simple stuff, as I said. And it does that and it returns that calculation back to the main function. Simple. And we print it out. And as uh, I can build it, uh, I'm going to run it. Uh, let me just. Uh, hang on here. Let me just uh, share the output here. Okay. So this is where the output would be when I build it, uh, compile and linking basically. Uh, oh, uh, an error was generated. Uh, unterminated directive. Um, oof. All right, okay, hopefully I'll fix that. Uh, we'll run, build, and execute. So there you go. So that's exactly what we did. So you can see in the output, um, here it compiled everything that it needed, just one. Um, C++ function here. It compiled the C++ here um, with all these parameters. And it, what it does, it'll create an object file called uh, .o.o. .o. Um, and not only that, um, it will now link those um, object files together to create one bin file that you can run together called futures algo. So if I go to that where this exists, Basically, what that means is if I go to, um, I think it's code light. Uh, we need doc. I can't remember where this resides. CPP. Let's see. Test. Uh, I can't remember where uh, this resides. Oh, there's an easy way to find that out. Um, let's do a find. Gotta do a pseudo course. Find uh, that name and one of the files. We'll call it uh, future CPP. Where does this file reside? There we go. So that's where this file resides. So we want to go to Quant Labs documents. It's close. So we want to go to test and then futures algo. Okay, so here's the structure that we built out. Okay, so we have a debug directory and a release directory okay in code light that's our ide we've got a, now a new mig file that's got created a project file for code light um i don't know what's in this text file and then we have the usual source files that we've been working with uh c plus plus header file and uh if i go into the release directory okay so this is what we can run, futures algo. So if I do that, there you go. So basically just printed that, what we saw earlier. Okay, so um, that's basically a role model that you can use with the main function and uh, a little basic uh, header files to sort of help you out in defining your algos, both in a header file, plus in the source C++ file, and if you want some constants defined as well, you can do that using this structure. Hopefully this will help you out.